Well, it's, no, for me, it's, it's not really. People do it for different reasons. And for me, the whole reason I'm involved in, in straight line um, is because it's pure. It's just about speed. And it's probably more about the engineering than it is um, about the riding. Yeah, because really, I got roped into all the bullshit of motorbike racing for years. And I loved it, but I just got wrapped up in all the bullshit and I forgot why I started racing motorbikes. And the only reason I start, started racing motorbikes was because I like building motorbikes. And then this is, this is, yeah, this is where it all started, really. Out the back of a van, go ride your bike, that's it. So yeah, yeah that's it, simple, dead simple. I've had turbo bikes from the late 80s and uh, always done these speed events. Must have done um, 30 years. It was back in little bed that I saw. I did circuit racing for a lot of years and um, also drag racing for a lot of years. But I always did this as well as. I'd sometimes run the same bike, so I'd have a, you know, say my drag bike, and then gear it for outright top speed, and then do speed here. So I've always done these events. There was pain in your eyes, so you vanished in the night. I've been riding sort of at a professional level. I've never been professional, but I've always rode, uh, not always rode, but I rode for 12 years at a professional level. I always worked. Um, and whilst I was doing that, I got asked to ride in Bonneville, like the famous Bonneville Land Speed for, for Triumph, trying to do, they, they built this motorbike and they wanted to be the first manufacturer to do 400 miles an hour on two wheels, um, which I thought, yeah, I'll, I'd love to be part of that. So yeah, I got involved and I'm, yeah. Yeah, I just, I, to be honest, I sort of underestimated. I just thought, well, it's only going in a straight line. What's going to be exciting about that? But I, I, you know, I wasn't getting paid, but it was, a, it, yeah, it was great to go to Bonneville and, you know, yeah, to get, a free plane trip out there and I got to sit in a motorbike, it was great. Um, so that was that was, that was was the reason. Um, and then we probably got three years into the project, Triumph realised it wasn't going to be as easy as just writing a cheque for whatever the amount was, because it was you know, no one's ever done it, so it wasn't as easy as that. Um, so yeah, from, from then on, um, Triumph sort of lost interest. They went motor to racing, there was the engine supply. So it looks like they had lost a little bit of interest in the land speed racing. So I've not been out for two years now, but in that time, I thought, well, I want to carry on. I obviously, I obviously can't afford to, to go to Bonneville and build a 400 mile an hour motorbike. But what I can do, I can try and build a motorbike to be the first man to do 300 mile an hour in a, in a mile. And that's, that's why I'm here. I just, I just love the high speed. Um, for many, for many years, I've, I've run um, turbo bikes. I, I own uh, Whole Shot Racing. We build a lot of turbo bikes for various people. The the buzz of just going the outright top speed is just just for me. That that's that's what does it for me. Every, everyone to their own. But I really enjoy is going as fast as I can go. Um, you obviously can't do it on a public road. So the, these events, they're one of the few events we can really get chance to open the bikes up. Yeah, yeah, I'm full of characters, mate. He's full of characters. Yeah, let's look at the boys I get involved with here. Um, like I built a bike for Pikes Peak about six years ago, um, and that put me in touch with a bloke called Jack Frost, who's got loads of experience in building turbo bikes. So I bought a few bits off him, um, and that was a good. Jack proved to be a good point of contact for building a bike to do 300 miles an hour. So yeah, it's just, uh, Jack's yeah, he's yeah, he's good old boy. Yeah, it's just all strange folk. They're all strange folk in their own way. In their own way, like I am. We're all a bit different, aren't we? We're all a bit different and yeah, people that tend to do the straight line stuff are all, yeah, all different, which is great, which is great. T today has just been a nightmare, it's just so windy all day. Um, the Hayabusa there have been hanging off the side of the bike, taking the fairings off, back on, mud guard off, full fairing off and just trying really hard to do a big speed and it's just, just been hard work and just very, very difficult. But then the, the ZX10 there, that's a smaller bike, a bit more nimble and a little bit easier to control. Uh, a bit less torque, a bit less power. And it's just set up really, really well. And that last run there then to just do over 240 miles an hour on a 1,000cc bike, um, it just, just made my day because to, to have so much wind and then do a good speed like that at the end is really good. And um, yeah, such a, such a happy. Makes it makes a change to come here and, uh, and be happy because normally we just we're just always suffering with the wind. So to still do a good speed in the wind was good. Just a shame I couldn't have done a really really high speed on the Ibusa. That's what we're trying to do. Coming down like running water, passing by myself in life. Tag it this weekend. Um, sit and wait for the weather. And I've got a bit of stuff to learn with the bike. We've changed 
a few strategies and that with the bar we've changed a few things but I'm not unless I'm going to go faster than I have done previously I'm not really going to learn anything so as it is I'm just going to sit and wait to learn to go fast you've got to learn to learn to wait so and that's what I'm doing drinking tea watching the world go by I'm running through the dark there's only one of these events roughly once a month. I'm over in Northern Ireland, so I've just got to commit myself to setting off the day before, regardless of weather, and hopefully we get a good day. And even if we just get a run and the weather's bad, it's just all that, all that data and you know some good data logging from, from any run we do. No, 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 the target is to do 300 miles an hour in my That's it. Job done. Pack the bike up, move on to the next challenge. That's, that's all it is. It's dead simple. It's dead simple. Nothing more, nothing less. I'll do that and then I'll move on to the next job. Building um, a four-wheel drive pickup to go up Pikes Peak. But you sort of tick that's ticking over in the background at this point in time. Yeah, I'm selling a few bits to get a bit more money to build that and then yeah, go up Pikes Peak with the car. I've been there with a the motorbike, now I'm gonna go with the car. So many signs and you know, hundreds of runs over the, over the many years. There's a, there's a big white light at the finish now, and you, from the bottom end, it's, you're just looking, it's a standing mile, and you can just see the, the final lights. I'm just aiming for that, and I'm looking just directly down the straight of the runway, and just try and set off as hard as I can, and accelerate as hard as I can through the gears to get the momentum in every gear, and just pass that speed on as I shift the higher gears, so fourth, fifth, sixth, and just keep the momentum going. Tell me in the water. Hold my hand is something turning me. When it's all happening, I have a very, um, I'm very particular how I, I like things done. So when I know that we're going to go fast, I would. I've got a couple of lads that come with me, right, and everyone knows what everyone's doing, and we've got a bit of a set routine we go through before we get to the start line, um, and then from then on, you just got to go through the process. I don't. It's, 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 a, it's, it's I say it's nerve wracking, but it's, it's not. I just deal with it like a bit of a, um, a machine, really. I just go through a process and then trying to hang on to the bike and try and steer the bike to the end of the mile. It's just, yeah, I've, I've, I've seemed to be doing okay because I've, I've, I've raced motorbikes for years doing dangerous stuff and I've never killed myself, so I'm obviously doing so much right. But we'll learn, won't we? We'll learn, we'll learn, we'll learn. It's a long way, I'm at two, 275 now. It's 25 mile an hour at those sort of speeds. is a massive, massive, massive hurdle to get over. Um, yeah, and there'll be a lot of hurdles between 275 and 300 that I haven't accounted for, so, yeah. It's good, it's good, yeah, yeah, it's great. Like, I'll do it or it'll, it'll I'll die trying. Yeah, but it's all about, I'm, I'm pleased I found this thing again because I, I was just racing motorbikes sort of normally, like June combat, like t -t -t that dangerous racing, TT racing and all that, and that was, it was great and all, but what I, I did, what I realised, the further on I got, I wasn't willing to die for it. Like, when I first started, I would have died for it, I didn't give a shit, I didn't give a shit. And then I've lost interest. I didn't, it wasn't worth dying for, and I thought, oh. that, and that's why I, my, I've lost, I've, I've lost interest because I wasn't willing to die for it. But now I'm in something where, yeah, yeah, if everything's right, I, I don't, I, yeah, I'm trying to die, trying to do something no one's ever done. And I think that's great. What a way to go. Obviously, I'm not, you know, and I'm not killing myself yet, so I'm doing something right. So, but um, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm willing to to pay the ultimate price to achieve my goals.